Let's throw our hands in the air Woo-hoo. as we soar through the sky. Yatta. We'll catch the sun Woo-hoo. with your hand in mine. And yeah. if we work as a team, everything will be fine. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's care, care of the what now? Let's henshin and start the show. Hello, fellow tropical owners who don't need a team, and welcome to Cure of the What Now. I'm your host, Kat, and I am a little penguin statue that should probably just be taken to the dump. What's it doing here? (laughs) Very excellent. And I'm your co-host, Joel, relative newbie to Shoujo. Is that the is that the name for it? Oh my gosh, does this even count as Shoujo? I don't know. Okay. We'll we'll, just call you a newbie to precure. A newbie to precure. And also, I'm the student council president who couldn't even find a room for this new club. And there's no way I'm going to approve a club that's just, we're going to hang out and stuff. That you need to fill this form out better. (laughs) But Nazi got no brains. (laughs) (laughs) Welcome to Cure of the What Now. This week, we do have an announcement that I'm actually really excited about. Fatariwa Precure has had, like, VHS rip level quality on Crunchyroll and Verve for years and years and years. They just uploaded a higher quality version that not only improves the visuals, but also the sound quality. Oh, excellent. Yes, we we were struggling with that quite a bit when we wa- went back to rewatch the first couple of episodes. So mm-hmm. I'm, I'm happy. And that's already up, like, today. Yes, it is. Wow. Pike on Twitter was saying that she still generally prefers Ari and I fan subs trans translations, Mm. which I think is fair. A lot of the translations that Crunchyroll has done for Precure, I've felt have been a little bit lacking. They're a little like the sentence structure is awkward, right? I say with an awkward sentence structure of my own. (laughs) My God, the fan dubs have gotten to her too. A, I don't speak Japanese. So anybody translating this for me is better than me trying to figure it out myself. B, I would rather watch it legally and have slightly off subs than watch it illegally and maybe risk not getting any more legal precure because if it if we get enough legal precure over here maybe we'll get to buy the toys over here too and i like the toys could you imagine if when the uh, 20th anniversary happens i think that'll be in another two seasons if we got a limited release of the movie here in in the states that'd be pretty cool that would be so cool and i think we could definitely get there so that's that's just our announcement for today do we have any other announcements or news, or are we Gucci? I I don't think so. Uh, King of the What Now has now returned, so if you are into One Piece, you can head on over to... Uh, there's lots of different places, but we're on YouTube now, and you could also catch us on any, any podcatcher. Same place you get this podcast, probably. Right. If you're listening to us right now, you can listen to us later as well in the same place. <laughs> Uh, I have a discussion question for you this week. Good, good. I came up with one. What do you think it is that makes a Precure Fairy cute, but not annoying? They can't... They have to have a personality, is the most important thing. I would say that whatever their names are from that first season, Poorunes and Lurunes or whatever... uh, Poorunes is is actually... He is Star Twinkle, and I actually kind of liked him. But the the, um, Meeple and Mipple... I cannot stand them because the only two things they do is say their own name and want to F each other. They scream and they bone. Yeah, pretty much. Like, they're just (laughs) constantly like, oh my god, I've been away from this other person for so long. Oh my god, they're cicadas. I guess so, yeah. They're 17 year cicadas and they emerge to scream and get some. You know what? Absolutely. (laughs) But like, no, that's, that's really interesting because I would say Pafu is probably widely regarded as one of the best fairies. She's I mean, cute. she's high on our list for sure. She's got a personality. She's got a dream. We love Pafu. Another one that people really like that I personally find a little bit annoying, but not as bad as, say, Meeple and Mipple, is Mofaroon. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Because Mofaroon doesn't get to do much. She's just sort of there. Mofaroon is max stats on the cute scale, I think, for those who, who do love her. And we, when we watched Witchy with our Discord, there were several people who were very strong Mofroon fans. And, you know, I don't necessarily disagree, but I, I for one, thought that Hachan was far more adorable. But <laughs> <laughs> I think, yeah, it has to do with, like, how much screen time do they get? 
How do they utilize that screen time and how do they interact with other characters? I loved the, I can never remember if it's Kofret or a chauffeur who is paired up with Erica, but there is an episode where they kind of had like a, a slight riff in their relationship. And that episode put more character into Erica's fairy than I've seen from all other fairies combined. Absolutely. Also, I will say not having a high pitched voice is a bonus. Absolutely. I, uh, we've only seen the one episode of Yes Precure 5, but I kind of want to take Coco and yeet him. Just yeet him off a cliff. Defenestrate Kay. him. It's it. We watched the first episode of like four or five different seasons back to back. We marathoned and try to figure out what we wanted to watch. And I do not remember Coco. Coco is the fox that can also be a sexy man. See, I seriously don't remember. Oh, oh with the baby, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. No. No? That's no. a different season? That's a different season. You're thinking of Fresh Precure when it's the weasel and the baby. And okay. they're amazing. What a duo. <laughs> <laughs> Big uh, Timon vibes. Okay. Like if Timon had to be a single dad. <laughs> All right, all right. Now, for anyone listening, I've got a call to action for you. Just in the comments, or you can you can message us on Twitter, or you can add us at Twitter. But just let us know your favorite uh, fairy, and please include seasons because we've only seen like four all the way through and your least favorite and kind of like what differentiates them? What makes you think that the fairy on the left is, is the best fairy of all time and what makes the fairy on the right your least favorite of all time? And it doesn't have to be a, a character that you hate. Maybe you love all fairies, but there's got to be one that you love a little bit less than the others. That's, that's my belief. That's a good call to action. I like that. Moving into the episode, it is yes. the part of the episode where we give thanks and praise to Viva Spark Tropical Rouge Precure. It is right to give thanks and praise to Viva Spark Tropical Precure. Pre, Precure. Precure. Pretty cure, as they say. <laughs> we're pretty and we're cure. <laughs> One of my favorite lines in this opening is, I can't even remember how they translate it. I think they translate it as Tropica Shine, but the Japanese sounds like Tropic Catch. Oh, yeah. And I just, I really like that. Like, we're going <laughs> to Tropic Catch our dreams. I don't know. So I'm still enjoying it. Do you want to give me a succinct summary of what went down? Yes. Manatsu runs into some, like, Popeye-style villains who are going to rough her up, and then this mysterious girl shows up and single-handedly takes care of them. And this upperclassman who saves the day is Asuka Takizawa, and uh, she has red hair, and she's very tall and very strong, and Laura and Manatsu immediately are like, do you want to be pre-cure? And she goes, no, and Laura literally off. comes out of the bottle to be like, I'm revealing myself early this episode, <laughs> become pre-cure. <laughs> yes, and she decides that she doesn't want to. However, as Manatsu has, has submitted a form to the student council for, you know, their official club, which doesn't have a name and whose activity is very broad, the president is like, we don't have a a room for you and there seems to be some kind of beef between azuka is it azuka or asuka asuka okay i apologize i'm probably gonna add a z because that's just extra cool and, and asuka is the cool one but anyways there's some beef between asuka and the student council president and she offers to give them a club room so she spends a couple of days with them helping them clean out the shed and and she sees how impressive minori is at at organizing and she helps uh, 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 oh Songo. no, Ichinose. No, wait, that's the other one. She helps Songo pick up a Tanuki style kind of statue or whatever. Laura's there and she's being a little princess, a little goblin, a oh, little. Oh, we'll get into it. Yeah. Laura is a princess corner. But <laughs> she's kind of giving out demands and Asuka's kind of like, man, how do you people put up with her? She's kind of bossy. And Manasa's like, no, 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 she's great. She just, she's just too, she's just very direct. Anyways, so Asuka still has decided not to become a precure, but then surprise, she decides to become a precure, and she becomes Cure Flamingo, and she's very strong, and she saves the day. And so now she's decided to give teamwork another shot because she previously had been the lone wolf who doesn't need anyone's help. And, ooh, I stand alone. But now she's she's learned to open up. So now she's friends with them. And that's that's it. Manatsu offered her a melon bread. Yes. <laughs> Everyone knows offering melon bread creates friendship. <laughs> You know, absolutely. <laughs> but, of course, because this is Tropical Rouge Precure, it wasn't ever going to be Strawberry Melon Pan. No. It's like Tropical Melon Pan. I think it's melon is... One is mango. That's okay. uh, the favorite that they share in common. And then, like, I think she had a pineapple okay. melon pan. 
That's kind of, I, I realize now that I said I think it was melon flavored, but it's called melon pan. So that, that must be where my brain got confused. Did you know it's called that? Not because it's melon flavored, but because the cross sections in it make it look like a melon. You know, I assume so when you had a uh, a melon pan that was strawberry, which is not a melon. <laughs> strawberry melon could be a flavor combination that somebody somewhere might enjoy. Yeah, no, absolutely. Did you like this episode? Kind of. Okay. Uh, so... The opening, as we've said before, uh, all of these girls are like super happy and excited and like really expressive and smiling big old smiles. But then in the actual episodes, Songo is a little bit more reserved than it's shown in the opening. And Minori is super reserved compared to the opening. And uh, I kind of thought that Asuka was going to be like this bright, cheerful, happy-go-lucky, like basically Manatsu version two, older Manatsu. And in this episode, she's a lot more somber, and she has the pre-cure equivalent of a tragic backstory, but we don't know what it is. And I was a little let down. I like the characters who are like, uh, you know, super like, whoa, I have all this energy. And so for me to have expected Flamingo to, to have been this like bright star, and then for her to be a little bit more reserved... That was a little frustrating, but she did have this amazing expression when she offered to help them. And Matsu goes, oh, you're going to help us? And she has this shocked moment of like, oh, no. She almost gives me the vibes of like one of those characters who has to offer help and then immediately regrets it. Like she she had to. She saw tiny people in need and she was like, I will protect these eggs. Yes. At one point when we were watching this episode, we made the joke that uh, As- Asuka has adopted the other three as basically her children, and she must protect them. That's why she became a cure. So I actually really liked this episode. I thought it was one of the stronger episodes we've had. Okay. And part of the reasons for that is it introduced us to Asuka as a character, but we didn't get her whole tragic backstory the way we did for Songo and Minori. We got enough of a hint that we can probably guess what it is. You know, she's kind of looked sadly at the tennis courts when she was talking about not needing teammates. And she's got a weird thing with the president. So they were probably like tennis teammates and the president left to go be president. And yes, Twitter, we have noticed the the observation that the they're subtext. probably a couple. The, uh, the red-haired uh, Asuka and the purple-haired or blue-haired other girl whose name I don't think we got. And if we did, I didn't write it down. But I like that. I like that they didn't have to tell us every single thing about her and we still kind of get what her deal is. I also really appreciated her dynamic with Laura, which I just want to point out, I totally called like <laughs> three episodes ago in the podcast. Yes. Um, they, <laughs> Laura, <laughs> Laura just, she does her normal dominating Laura thing and Asuka's like, I'm not into that. That's gross. <laughs> Laura practically gloms her and is like, you'd be perfect as a pretty cure. And Asuka is like, no, I, I don't want to. And then Laura goes, but it'll help me become queen. And Asuka sees right through and goes, so you just care about the title, right? <laughs> and then Laura gets all like smug and goes, well, what's wrong with that? And then I looked at Joel and I went, the world gets saved and Laura gets to be queen. It's a win-win. As Laura says, it's a win-win. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Do you think that there's going to be continued friction between... Asuka and Laura now that they're officially both uh, pre-cure teammates. A little bit. I think it'll be like the friendly rivals kind of friction. I don't think that they actively will hate each other, but no. I do think that- They'll tease each other maybe. Yeah, Laura will will do her queenly thing and Flamingo will be like, ugh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still waiting for, and I mean, we're, we're, we're in early season, but I'm still waiting for Laura to have a moment where she realizes just how much she cares about the people rather than using them as pawns. And maybe in the next, you know, four or five episodes, we can get a hint towards that or something. Absolutely. I will say I'm pleased that they have finally kind of chosen a club. Yeah, sort of. Like when they turned the thing into the present, it was just called like our club or something like that. Like it had a really generic name and the description was we want to enjoy school activities. So I'm hoping now that they have a base, now that they have all four of them, and I think they hinted at that they needed a fourth person to join in order to be officially sanctioned as a club. But I'm hoping that they figure something out. Well, and here's something weird, and maybe this was just a translation thing, or maybe it was people speculating. I thought I saw on Reddit that she had decided their trub... Their trub... 
they had decided their club was going to be the Tropical Club. Ah, and so I thought okay. that was kind of going to be the end of the episode, but maybe that's just the translation they got for mm. the a club to enjoy our school lives. Yeah, you know, it's 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 strange because I actually, from all of the anime that I've consumed, I've never been to Jap- Japan, but I assume that it was mandatory that you had to join a club. But at some point, I think it's Asuka or someone asks, why are you so excited to join a club? Which I guess indicates that it's not obligatory. You you don't have to. However, I do wonder what, how, how do I say this? I wonder what level the clubs can get to. Because like, if you take like a tennis club, they, they probably play tennis. They probably practice and that sort of thing. But could you have a club that works on beautifying the town? Like, because I could see them being some kind of like community outreach center where they take requests from people living in the city like, oh, this this flower garden used to be so beautiful, but no one takes care of it. And they go, we'll take care of it. And maybe that's what they do. They're community service leaders. That'd be pretty cool. That would be pretty cool. I like that. I also enjoy that Minori is the brains of the operation. And even though the plan... Let's move everything in the shed out of the shed is a fairly simple one step plan. She didn't take the time to diagram it out so that even Minatsu could understand. Minatsu and Sango are so funny. They were so impressed by this. We move the stuff out. We clean. We throw the stuff away. And it's like, have you two never cleaned anything (laughs) to be this impressed with this very basic plan? Oh, man. More interaction between the cures is always good. I'm hoping now that we have all four of them that we get to see them fleshed out a little more in the next couple of episodes, particularly Minori, I feel like could use a little bit of attention because I feel like maybe it's just because we've had Songo for longer, but I feel like Songo and um, Asuka, I have more of a grasp on, whereas Mm. Minori is like, she's the quiet one slash organizer. And it would be really easy for her to get lost in the plot threads of the rest of them. Absolutely. Did uh, Cure Custard get a lot of time in the spotlight after her introduction? She did, surprisingly. Okay. I, yeah, I still need to go back and finish uh, Kira Kira. I got to Aoi's introduction, but, uh, or is she just Ao? Doesn't matter. Um, (laughs) But anyways, yeah, I would prefer that Minori gets more time in the spotlight. I could see her being the type who's like most excited inwardly to, oh, a mysterious uh, island has appeared in the distance, but also the least likely to try and like go for it. So I could see her maybe overextending herself, like in the middle of the night, she she investigates something and then she gets trapped and the other girls have to save her. Or they could have an episode where uh, she she really wants to do something, but she's not expressing herself. And eventually like, you gotta say something, girl. Otherwise we won't know. We're not mind readers. You know what else was funny about this episode? Okay. There was no Laura gives a pep talk moment. No. Like, she didn't have to tell Asuka to believe in herself. Asuka believed in herself just fine. She just didn't want to do it. In fact, when Asuka showed up and said, you know, hand me the compact, she explicitly said, I'm not doing this for you. I'm doing this for me. She's already too headstrong for the for the uh, the mermaid girl. I really I hope that they do keep some semblance of like a playful teasing relationship going forward, because I think that would be an excellent chance to flesh out Laura's character even more. Absolutely. And we've talked about how kind of the ideal arc for her would probably be her learning to care about other people and learning to be less selfish and a foil that's not interested in letting her be the boss of them. I think is exactly what she needs for that kind of growth. Manatsu's not going to make her grow as a person. Manatsu's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Carry me on your shoulders, Manatsu. Okay, Laura. Yeah, see, you said s- something about Asuka being uh, the I have to help people even if I don't want to type of person. But I think that Manatsu in a way is even more that because I think that she just wants to give everything her all and she wants to help people. So I don't think that she would oppose Laura. I think she would help Laura no matter what, whereas Asuka might be the type to be like, hey, listen, it's great that you want to save people, but maybe you should try being nice while you do it. I also enjoy the thought of maybe uh, if some kind of conflict arises, and of course it would be a minor thing, but if if for some reason Songo and Minatsu or, or Minatsu and Laura kind of have like a bit of a of an argument i like the idea of the big sister being the one who kind of sits down with them and like makes them talk and like now uh uh, you know hug and make up you two (laughs) i won't allow this cure flamingo's transformation did it slap or did it slap it you know it slapped pretty hard yeah i liked it as we've said before on king of the what now it reached inside and slapped your ghost (laughs) 
Yeah, something that we say all the time. I think I remember you mentioning that <laughs> phrase once before. But no, it was pretty good. Something that I noticed, I think, during uh, Papaya's transformation, each of the girls has like a different primary shape kind of associated with them. And it's the shape that appears around like their wrists when they're when their gloves show up and it shows around their ankles when their boots show up. And so Manatsu's is a heart and Songo's is kind of like a, a round plus, maybe like a it's clover. A flower. Yeah, it's a flower. Uh, and papayas is kind of a weird shape, but I guess you could say it's a papaya shape. It's, it's ovalish. And flamingos is a diamond. And I really appreciate that. I appreciate that she has the longest hair of the girls, and that's her, her transformation point, if you want to call it that. And it, it, it looks gorgeous as it flows out from her in her mid-transformation. I really form. want to draw her in Cure Chocolate's outfit. Okay, yeah, absolutely. I think those two would get along pretty well. They're both kind of the big sister, red-haired types. Yeah, I think Cure Chocolate would be like, be nicer to your tiny teammates. <laughs> well, yeah, I absolutely. And I mean, I haven't actually seen Akira in action, but I'm just saying that I think, broadly speaking, they do fit in relatively the same kind of niche. Asuka would have no patience for Cure Macaron's <laughs> nonsense. <laughs> You spoiled princess, go away. Carry me. Oh my god. Do you think Yukari and Laura would get along? Or do you think they'd be too op oppositional? You know, it's really hard to say. I don't think they would get along. <laughs> I think Yukari would probably be like, I don't like that you're taking my role as the purple haired <laughs> princess girl. <laughs> okay, yeah, absolutely. Does Laura have purple hair? I'm imagining it is purple. Yeah, I think it's like a lavender color. Oh my god. <laughs> What is this? It's some kind of like selective amnesia that's happening to us. But what's more important than that is Flamingo's transformation. We got a little sidetracked from it. Uh, her transformation phrase is fluttering wings before she introduces herself. And her final attack is swooping Flamingo Smash, which sounds kind of like a Pokemon move. An enormous Flamingo's foot appears mm. and just comes down on the, the enemy. Yeah. Uh, I, I like it a lot. She didn't really have, like, a special thing. Uh, you know, Songo can create the little X shield, and Papaya can shoot eye lasers. She didn't get anything in this episode, and maybe she's just so strong she doesn't need one, or maybe they will give her something, uh, as, as her, as her story progresses, as she, we learn more about her character. She appears to be kind of a punchy, kicky girl. Yeah. So I wouldn't be surprised if she remains a punchy, kicky girl. What did you think of, um, her whole thing being, I don't want to be a part of a team. And then like teamwork was the thing they needed to defeat <laughs> the Yarn -A -Da for this episode. Yeah, I, I like that. And uh, she being the one to be like, like we did for the clubhouse. I thought that was pretty cool. Yes, absolutely. I like that she kind of took on a uh, leadership role and, a, and a, a directional kind of role. Like you said, it's, it's a good thing that they kind of took a little while to flesh out her story. They didn't just give us, you know, her tragic backstory it, three minutes into the episode and four minutes into the episode, she's over it. But I do kind of wish maybe she hadn't become a cure until that arc had completed. Like, if we had had two or three episodes with her, in at first episode she's introduced and they're like, please be a member of the team. And she's like, no. And then maybe second episode she becomes better friends with them and maybe she helps them while they're fighting without actually becoming a precure like she shows up and is like hey the this thing's weakness is it's a it's a remote control so destroy the remote control like and then the next episode she finally accepts the fact that she wants to be a part of the team that'd be awesome yeah that would have been pretty good i do feel like we are going a little bit lightning fast and it makes me curious about what the next set of episodes is going to bring mm -hmm. the one thing i liked about uh, kira kira we watched Kira Kira and Star Twinkle in seven episode chunks, and yes. then we met once a week to talk about them. Pretty much every seven episode chunk in Kira Kira was like its own contained arc. So we had the first seven episodes, which were pretty much just finding all the cures. And then we had the second set of episodes, which was let's find a place for our pastry shop. And, yeah. you know, so I'm curious if this is going to similarly be able to be broken up into distinct arcs or if we're just going to kind of wander around and be slice of life for a while. I don't mind slice of life, but I also like when there's kind of more overarching plots. Uh, I'm, I'm hard to please anything that I watch. If I did a, podcast or an episode where I talked about it, I could probably find something where I'm like, well, I don't really like this part. What if they did this? 
And if you change it too much, it wouldn't even be anything like the original. But I'm hoping now that they have all four cures, because Laura had four compacts in that first episode, that maybe they set up like a Skype meeting with the Queen, and maybe they get like stage two of the mission. And it doesn't have to be like every episode they get for they get closer to achieving it, but something Dear that's in the Princess background. Princess Celestia. <laughs> <laughs> Today's lesson about Tropica Shining. <laughs> yeah. I predict that they will have a Zoom call with the Queen, like you said. And the seal will show up. The seal will come and be with Laura. And the seal will be there like, he'll point you to the magical MacGuffin you have to collect 12 of. Ah, yeah, absolutely. It does seem like many seasons of Precure have a collect X number of things. And it does seem that 12 is a is a pretty common number. In the first season, it was seven of the jewel hearts or whatever they're called. But... I suspect that there will be, you know, like the the eight shining jewels or something. Um, I as, I would assume that they're going to do a rainbow thing. I associate that with tropical. So maybe there will be seven. There'll be a red and an orange and a yellow. But they need something more than just, hey, sometimes bad guys are going to show up and you should try to fight them, you know? Absolutely. The next episode might also be about finally figuring out what their club is. <laughs> maybe they'll all disagree. Like, you know, maybe they all kind of share a vision of hanging out together. But once it comes down to the actual details, you know, I could see Minori being like, it should be a club about books. And I could see Minatsu being like, it should be about a club about being outside. <laughs> Makeup! Working out! <laughs> <laughs> and Laura goes, girls, girls, this is a club about bringing me chocolates. <laughs> this is this is a club about worshiping the almighty Laura Mermaid. No new villains this episode. It was just Dr. New Mary again, but yes. I still love Dr. New Mary. She's excellent. Of of the two villains we've had introduced, I think she's my favorite so far. Yeah, absolutely. Chongare, I think is his name. He kind of just reminds me of kind of like the uh, the Gaston type, you know, the buff and muscular and thinks they're they're all that, but they aren't kind of character. And they're OK. But uh, Numeri seems to have a little bit more subtlety to her character. We still don't know exactly what they want or get out of what they're doing. So it would be interesting if maybe when we got that Skype call, if if the Quit, not the witch queen, the mermaid queen could say like, hey, by the way, there's the, the the star of eternal sunshine and the witch of delays wants to take that so that everyone will fall asleep for some reason. And New Mary likes that because she, some reason. Yeah, I'm wondering if the witch of delays needs the motivation power in order to like stop procrastinating on her own stuff she needs a cure for her depression and it's easier to steal motivation from other people than going to a therapist <laughs> something like that <laughs> sea witches will literally steal motivation from other people instead of going to therapy <laughs> absolutely now you said that you wanted to circle back to laura being a uh, gremlin princess absolutely my favorite part of every episode Laura sits on a box and starts telling people what to do. And Asuka, Asuka? Yeah, Asuka. Asuka. Asuka's like, do you want to help? And Laura goes, I don't do things like that. <laughs> no, here's the thing. She did in the Crunchyroll translation say, besides I'm a mermaid, and she pointed to her fin. And maybe that was one of those mistranslations or, or things that we would translate differently. But how how well can Laura carry things when she only got the one fin. Have you seen those mops that you can strap to the bottoms of your babies so that as oh, your baby yeah. crawls, mm -hmm. it mops the floor? That. And she just like <laughs> wiggles. <laughs> I like that a lot. I like the idea of all four of the cures ganging up in order to like wrap her in this outfit. And she's like, no, stop it. I'm a princess. What are you doing? Unhand me. You're always asking us to touch your tail, Laura. Not for <laughs> Joel, to take us out, do you have any crack theories? Any crack theories for the future? Um, you, you've, re you've really put me on the spotlight. Like, I want to come up with something really funny and really witty, but I just don't know if I have it can right I, now. Can I share one from Reddit that yeah. I think is yeah, pretty absolutely. funny? Laura 
is behind the Witch of Delay's attack on the Mermaid Kingdom. So that when she saves the day, she, she can, can be regarded. Queen. She's syndroming it, basically. Yeah. She is secretly the ultimate villain of Tropical Rouge Precure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I like that. What about Asuka had a wonderful. Uh, um, uh, pairs team for tennis. They were the undisputed champions. They were at the height of power. But then the paparazzi discovered them <gasps> holding hands. And so they had to dissolve the team and they are no longer allowed to see each other lest their secret be outed. And they will be reunited as Manatsu proudly pumps her fist in the air and declares lesbian rights. And that has been your do 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 final thought. Outro goes here. Don't forget to Tropic a Shine, everyone. Ha ha! What a great episode of King of the What Now, your One Piece podcast that started from the very beginning and stars these two doofuses. If you want to follow us on social media, Twitter is the best place to do that. I am at K-O-T-W-N underscore pod. And I am at Pirate Ghost Host. Absolutely, yes. We share all sorts of thoughts on there, some related to the podcast, some related to other things. But you can also reach us through email at kingofthewhatpod at gmail.com, or you can also find us on Patreon. We would love some subscribers or supporters, whatever the technical term is. Patrons. Patrons. So fancy and grown up. Uh, And you can find that at patreon.com slash king of the what pod you can find all sorts of things like bonus episodes and you get to see the full cold open candidates not just the ones that make it into the episode maybe someday if i learn to draw i'll put stuff up there we're always looking for suggestions and feedback and speaking of which please take a moment to rate and review our podcast wherever you get us from so itunes spotify scrivener that's for writing but wherever you listen to our podcast take Take a moment to leave a review. It helps other people find us. We are so grateful to all of our listeners, and we couldn't do this without you. Absolutely. Word of mouth is super powerful, so if you have a friend who likes One Piece and they haven't heard of us, just direct them to the latest episode. And if they hate us, they can tell us why. And if there's an actionable item, we'll try to please you. That's how this works. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day.